Hello YouTube! Todd the Time Traveler here. Hope you're all doing swell. If you've been working along with me for the past year or so, um, then you should be about this far along with your time travel packs. Today's a big day because we're going to give these babies a whirl. Are you ready to travel through time? I know I am. <laughs> First though, I wanted to take a moment to thank you all for coming along on this journey with me. Being a time travel pack vlogger is uh, pretty lonely sometimes and you guys make it all worthwhile. But before we go launching ourselves through time and space, I wanted to take a moment just to answer a fan question or two. So I kept my eye on the comments for the past few days and I pulled out a question that I'll go ahead and address now. I wrote it down right here. Okay, this one's from It's Just Nikki. How do you correct for the invariance of the hyperwave flux generator? Well, that is a good question. The hyperwave flux generator, which is right here, uh, generally fluctuates between 2.5 and 2.7, which <laughs> is a problem. So that's why I recommend you buy a molecular dissociator. You can just get them at like Target or Walmart or wherever. Um, and you don't just automatically plug it in though. You wanna ionize the synthesizer first. So I hope that answers your question. It's just Nikki. Thank you. We'll do one more here. This one's from Pyro674. Pyro asks, a few weeks ago, you dematerialized the magnetomic proton disperser. Does that increase the efficiency of the filament? And that's another good question. Uh, first of all, just an important correction here. I didn't technically dematerialize the magnetomic proton disperser. I isolated and then I uncoupled it. So I know that seems like a really picky distinction. I don't want to split hairs here, but dematerializing it would actually realign the quantum gearbox and uh, <laughs> nobody wants that. So, <laughs> but to answer your question, yes, it does increase the efficiency of the filament by like just about one or two megahertz. Okay. Thank you so much for your questions. It's just Nikki and Pyro674. Now remember, you, you want to be careful when you do this. You might see an unusual wave pattern in the theorem accelerator, but you don't need to worry about that. You just jiggle the handle of the hydrogen warp port and everything will be just fine. Now for the moment of truth. Clip the harness. Safety first. Dial the quantum entanglement to 42.314. Interesting. Hmm. Hola, YouTube. So last time was a bit of a bust, but I think I know what happened. Hey, here's a tip. Uh, charge your resonance drives. <laughs> well, that was yesterday. Onward. History, or should I say the future will be made today and you will all witness it. <laughs> oh, one more thing. I ran the pack through a prism phase shifter just a couple of times and you're going to want to do that if you notice like a frequency shift in the cooling system. Okay, here we go. All right. Here we go. Oh. Greetings, YouTube. I know it's been a while since my last video, but uh, as you can probably guess, I had a lot of a lot of tinkering to do with this puppy right here. So you know, I just had to like scrape a few nodules, reroute the computer cord, deactivate the pulse initiator. But today, my friends, the sweet smell of success is practically oozing from my pores. This time, I'm gonna try and add a grounding mechanism, something that can reroute the auxiliary power from the Bing-Einstein capacitator. Can you guess what that mechanism is? That's right, it's my headlamp. I'm just wiring it straight into my headlamp attached to my head. <laughs> Here we go. Go. 
I bet this never happened to Mark Rober. <sighs> Good morning, YouTubers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm just gonna go ahead and acknowledge that the last time was a bit of a disappointment. But I realized, hey, I was playing a little safe building this thing. I needed more power, more snot, as they say. So I added a little more, okay, I added a lot more reflection plasma in the photon shifter. That should get us jamming into warp speed in no time. Today is the day we travel through time, folks. So, if you're just joining us for the first time, uh, first of all, welcome. Second of all, you are about to witness history, my friends. So, I plugged myself directly into the house, right into the breaker box. 120 volts, getting ready to launch me into legend. What the hell happened? Nothing, Mom! The lights went out! I know! Hey, YouTubers. So, last time I totally uh, tripped the breaker. The main breaker of the house. Uh, that was my fault. I'm kind of embarrassed about it. Uh, turns out uh, it was a total rookie mistake, just a total like boner on my part. I'm pretty sure I know what happened though. Don't laugh, but I never replaced the temporal array in the goddamn thrust assembly. <laughs> anyway, that's all in the past now. Just gonna let bygones be bygones. As you can see, I'm outside now and I've got this wire coming off of me which runs directly into the city power grid. So, I really think this is gonna work, and let's get right to it, shall we? It's gotta be it. This is all the marbles. <laughs> 